In traditional project management, there's often a project plan that has to be developed for several months to a year ahead of time. Uh, that doesn't necessarily work with learning analytics, especially with it being a, a newer technology, a newer process in, into the, the sector. Um, some of the phased approaches that we've recommended, it does depend per institution on where they are, but some of the first steps are to, to start getting data uh, to JISC to be able to start putting it into learning record warehouse, having the data quality assessed, um, looking at piloting when that might actually work with a small group of, of personal tutors and students to learn from that to then create a, a little bit more of a, a roadmap, I guess I would call it, more so than a project plan uh, for the coming months. Um, setting the expectation for the need for flexibility uh, consistently is also something that's, that's part of that uh, phased approach. Um, we've never recommended that anything be a, a big bang or a silver bullet solution, so there's always going to be changes associated with that. I think another important piece about a phased, a phased approach is in, in traditional uh, technology implementation, we'll talk to people, we'll gather requirements, we'll specify the project and deliver a product. With learning analytics, I, I would argue it's, it's so new, nobody's finished yet, we don't know what the finished product looks like. Any conversation we have with people, we might start that conversation on retention and immediately more ideas are thrown into the pot of what else we could do with this. So the phased approach allows us to discover more questions, more ideas along the way, rather than putting something in place, spending a lot of money and finding we have new requirements that were just not considered. So we get to try things, learn from that, try something new, learn from that. Because learning analytics is so dynamic and it is iterative and it's going to change over time, the project planning and management structure also needs to follow that. So having a more agile approach to project management seems to be something that is complementary. It, it ties into the governance structure of consistent change. It allows for uh, those changes to be integrated into processes and, and policies, practices, um, a traditional project management structure, structure is a little bit more rigid. Um, it doesn't necessarily allow for, for continuous change and integration of new ideas. So we've met, recommended more of a flexible project management structure that is, is similarly aligned with Agile. We think it can help also with uh, risk management in that um, an Agile methodology is, isn't a big bang approach. So you're not going to invest a huge amount of money into a system which you then find doesn't achieve what you were hoping. Um, with Agile, it, it's small steps, iterations. You can take some steps in the wrong direction, but easily roll back and then head off in a new direction. Um, adding in requirements as people think up new pieces to add to that picture. Um, often we, we find institutions are a bit worried about that, um, where they're used to a more rigid resource allocation model. And we advise that um, time can be allocated, which if it, if it is needed, it will be used. But if it isn't needed, it can be reallocated. So maybe a half day a week of a developer might be a, a compromise to uh, free the resources should it be required. It also helps with the aspect of risk management because changes can be integrated so quickly that if you do end up making some steps in a direction that doesn't seem to work, you can course correct much more quickly than you can with a traditional project management structure. So when you think about traditional project management, you think about more of a waterfall type structure, um, meaning you have to have all the answers up front. Um, the way that the Agile methodology works with learning analytics and the um, predictive modeling piece is very iterative. Um, so it does take the pressure off from a business perspective as well as a technical perspective that no, you don't have to have every single piece 100% in place ready to go, implement beginning to end. Um, but what you do have to do is you have to have just enough. So in working with institutions from a data perspective, um, especially from a historical data perspective, it's important to discuss with the institution 
how much data do you have? Let's take a look at what is available um, and let's make that an iterative process. Example, when an institution provides historical data to be um, looked at from a data quality perspective, it is very iterative. We take what is available, we run it against scripts, and we produce what we call a data quality report. Um, if that quality is um, up to par per the institution's perspective, then we proceed on to the next step. Um, if the institution wants to provide, let's say, an additional predictor um, that's very important to the institution, such as attendance data, um, having an iterative process and framework in place to be able to accommodate what's important to the institution um, is very easy to um, implement into an agile type framework. It's an advantage from a data perspective because we're able to work with institutions based on the data provided and depending on how that data is um, conforming for the performance of the model. Um, so again, it's very iterative in that the institution can provide um, data and we can run it through the model and if it's not performing per the institution's expectations, we can go back and work with the institution to perhaps change ratios in regard to um, certain data sets um, to help work with the institution to get the model to perform um, per the institution's expectations. So from an iterative perspective, that works out very well for the institution because you're able to help the um, institution get the data performance that is um, wanted. Another thing that's very important to remember is that um, you, can, you can train the model and you want to retrain the model um, every six months, every year. It's not a final product. It's very iterative. We can continue to enhance the performance of the model based on the data based on additional predictors, based on additional data sets that the institution finds important as time goes on. So having a flexible framework in place and being able to introduce additional data sets or additional predictors will only benefit the institution and the performance of the model.